Takes the snap. Sets up. Sets up. Throws one over the knee. Intercepted. Marlon Jackson. Marlon's got it. We're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> This. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. <laughs> Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. <laughs> but I'm about to go down. You're listening to the For the Culture podcast, hosted by Luke Diamond, Jason Spears, and Bobby Jefferson. Absolutely pathetic, and you know it points to our inability to game plan. We've we've looked at this now for solidly for at least three years you know the first year or two you know we kind of gave him a mulligan I'll be honest I was very pro Pagano um, I used to listen to a lot of people that would you know say that he was not a good coach his inability to do this and do that I would actually get mad because I was thinking to myself you know hey we're winning I wasn't really seeing the big picture until it got to the point where it just became too obvious and now you're looking at the local media who are also coming down on him very hard at this point. And I think it just points to the fact that a lot of people are fed up. We go into every game and we look lost. And we hear him every week saying, you know, we got a good game plan. We had a good week of practice. It's so cliche at this point that we know what Pagano is going to say in every press conference. We know what he's going to say after every post game. But the problem is the fact that every game we go into, we are just not prepared. Teams look like they know exactly what we're doing. We have no in-game adjustments. We never make Mm in-game adjustments. We're always just a step behind. Our defense is always out of place. And at some point, you can blame personnel, but when you have 11 new starters on defense Mm -hmm. and your defense is doing the exact same thing that it was doing with the starters from last year, it then points Mm -hmm. to coaching. And the coaching is to the point where we just don't have a staff that is adequate enough to develop players and we have a staff that can actually put a game plan together that could go out and execute and, and beat a football team right now. We're a mess, and I'm not really going to blame too much personnel-wise. I'm not going to get much into the X's and O's and talk about the players, but this is all on coaching. And the fact that we can't game plan, our inability to put plans together has really come to a, a boiling surface at this point. And it's, it's really coming out on its head. You know, you go out and you give up 46 points to the Rams. You scored nine. And, yeah, we know our quarterback situation is not the greatest, but you gave up 46 points. We gave up pick sixes, and we just didn't look comfortable. We just never looked like we were into the game, never established a rhythm. And that's that's purely on coaching. It is, especially after six years. Like, six years of the same thing over and over. And now, like you said, the indie media came down hard on him this week, Holder and Doyle and guys who at one point in time supported him. And it irritates me a little bit now that they're coming down so hard on him when they were the ones chanting Chuck Stay people that were on that Chuck Stay movement. And now they're coming down almost like it's like what's in now. The cool thing is now to jump on board and hate Pagano and want to kick him out of town. When I was saying this three, four years ago, I was saying this after the AFC championship that I knew him and Ryan Gritchen would never get us to where we wanted to be. And I took so much flack for it. Now all these guys that have such a big following in Indianapolis are now saying what I was saying four years ago, and now everybody is like, they're right. It's time to fire Pagano. And I welcome all Chuck Stairs, but it's definitely like annoying how these people that were so pro-Chuck for so long, when it was so obvious that this man was never going to get us to where we wanted to be, now that they are all so anti-Chuck, it's annoying. Also, how like quick the Indianapolis media is to just completely change gears like next week we're going to get humiliated by the cardinals the week after if we somehow beat the browns which we should do because the browns are horrible and by then Brissett will have about three weeks under his belt of learning the colts playbook and he should start this week so he'll have at least one start under his belt so let's say we beat the browns you know the indie media is going to then start the shift and they'll start to make a case to keep chuck again and it's just it's just so annoying the short-term memory of so many Chuck supporters and so many guys in the Indianapolis media, it really does irritate me. And like you were saying, enough is enough. You go six years and you haven't been able to develop any talent. Like, I know Ryan Gritchen was, he was the worst general manager I've ever seen in my life, like across all sports. But you got to develop a couple of guys. You can't 
just hit so many 0 for 7s and 0 for 5s in drafts. I mean, it's almost not possible to go through as many players as Chuck was handed and to basically not be able to develop any of them. And you can easily say, hey, you know, we didn't get good draft picks. We didn't get quality players. But you can look around the league. Even the Cleveland Browns have players that they've developed and they have become good players where all of a sudden you are saying, hey, you know, this guy can look at it. He's developed now. Outside of Jack Doyle, you cannot name me out, well, also outside of Jack Doyle and Andrew Luck. You can't find me one player on the Colts roster that has developed over the last three, four, or five years. T.Y. Hilton is what he is. I have not seen much development out of T.Y. Hilton. He still can't get off press coverage, still fades away in big games, and when it comes down to – you know, making a play. Sometimes he does it, sometimes he does not. You know, Vontae Davis, God bless him, he's had a laundry list of injuries. But Vontae will give you eight great games, and he will give you eight games where you're kind of scratching your head like, what's going on? The development of Anthony Costanzo, it never happened. He is actually regressed to the point where you want to move him to right tackle and you want to invest a high draft pick here pretty soon in a left tackle because if you watch the tape, of the Rams game, you'll see that he's clearly regressed and he's clearly missing blocks and his head's down on his pass set. He's making soft sets. He's just not developing. And that speaks to coaching. If you go back to the Manning era, which I hate doing, and I hate really comparing the two, but if you go back to the era of Manning, you had those coaches that did nothing but develop players. The chair links that developed the D linemen. You had more that had an offense that was ever evolving, and we were never doing the same thing. And then we, and when we did do the same thing, we were just better because we knew exactly what we were doing. You know, you never went into too many games in that era saying, you know what, we got out coached. Now we may not have been the biggest team, so we may have got pushed around a little bit in some aspects, but that team always fought hard and they were always prepared. You just don't see that here. And after five years, six years going into it now. People can see it. You know, even the Chuck advocates that were hard-pressed and would give me grief, too, when I said, hey, this guy's got to go, the local media guys, they're even saying, hey, you know, this maybe this has to, this has to change now. So, you know, it's one of those things where you, you can only mask it for so long before it becomes way too obvious. And it's to the point now where it's obvious. And yeah. you're right. You're going to go into this Arizona Cardinals game. It's at home. There should be a bunch of emotion. There should be a bunch of excitement. But the excitement right now is gone in Indy. The air is out of the balloon. And, yeah, we know Andrew Luck is on the man, and who knows when he'll come back, if he comes back at all. I'm one of the people that are in the boat saying that he may not see the field in 2017. Um, and I'm getting blasted for that. But at the end of the day, you know, you have an emotionless game right now, and, you know, an emotionless team. And you'll see on Sunday with the – with the lack of emotion and confidence that the that the crowd's going to have. You roll out Scott Tolzien on Sunday as your starter, you'll hear boos every time we punt the ball, which would be more than 10 times because we went 0 for 10 on third downs last week. So it's a recipe for disaster, and, the, you know, the coach management and coaching staff is all to blame for this at this point. Yeah, when I look at the development of talent, even if you want to give T.Y., you want to give Pagano T.Y. as another guy, so take away Luck, who is a generational talent, and we knew no matter what, because the coaching staff really hasn't developed Luck to where he should be at this point. I know, granted, the injuries, but take Andrew Luck out of the picture, and you look at players that have evolved with the Colts and developed, and you look at Jack Doyle, and then you want to throw in T.Y. Hill, and you could throw in T.Y. Hill, and they're both pass catchers. They're both guys that Andrew Luck has made look better on the field. So it's really not even coaching. I think you could give Vontae maybe – for like that one year where you know Chuck took him from 2013 to 14 you want to give him that year of production where he made Vonte a better corner I mean you're really just nitpicking though because at the end of the day Pagano hasn't developed anything in six years he really hasn't developed any talent it's astounding how little he's done over the course of six years and where I'll give some people a little bit of slack where they might not have seen how bad Pagano was three or four years ago, he has regressed so much each of the last three seasons. Like, he's gotten so much progressively worse. It's actually scary to think how bad can he continue to get throughout the course of this season because this is just game one. And game two is going to be pretty ugly. Even without David Johnson, they're going to come in, and I think they're just going to light us on fire. I mean, I think it's going to be extremely ugly this weekend with the Cardinals coming to town. I do, too. And more of a point of the development of players. 
if you look at this team, the way it's been built from 2012 to the present, Pagano never really had to engage in player development. And here's why. Because we had so many older free agents and mm-hmm. so many guys that were, you know, yeah, good bought in. I'm not going to say brought in, but they were bought in by mm-hmm. Grigson. These guys were established veterans. They were six, seven, eight-year guys. You didn't have to develop them at that point. They were who they were at that point. So as far as getting them to their ceiling, as Ballard likes to say, they were already there. So Chuck became more of a player's coach and more of a friend's coach because he never actually had to crack the whip, hammer down, and develop a player and get him to the next level because they were already there. And when you start seeing the roster turning over and now all of a sudden you've got the fourth youngest roster you know, in football and would arguably have the second – youngest roster um, in football if you take away Vinatieri now you're seeing guys that need to be developed and they're yearning to be developed and they're just not getting there you're going to see some of our guys are going to be the exact same guys right now than they will be you know the last week of the season and they're not playing the guys that they need to play and you know and I'm not going to like I'm not going to get the personnel today but you can just tell that they're not being developed they're they're the same player today that they will be tomorrow and next week and weeks after because you have an inadequate coaching staff that you know really does not put the emphasis on player development it's here's our playbook here's our technique let's go out and practice our technique let's get back into our playbook and then we'll watch film and make corrections that's not getting anybody better that's just basically a stopgap band-aid to you know, get ourselves to the next game, and it's it's really starting to show at this point. Yeah, and that actually is what bothers me. And I was saying this back in like January when we signed Ballard, and then we kind of learned that Pagano would be the coach in 2017. It wasn't even about winning and losing in 2017 because we knew we were going to be, like you said, the fourth youngest roster. So we knew we would have an extremely young roster. We knew we wouldn't be ready to win yet in 2017, like big picture win, like compete for AFC championships and Super Bowls in 2017. So Pagano holding us back from winning wasn't the big concern because no matter who the coach is, if you bring in Vince Lombardi or Bill Belichick, this team is just not ready to win yet this year. We all knew that coming into the year because this was going to be a year of youth. So what bothered me the most back in January, finding out that Pagano was going to be returning for a sixth season, was that Ballard is going to go out. He's going to have a big draft. We're going to draft seven to nine guys. We're going to have a a lot of youth. We're going to go out. We're going to sign a lot of free agents that are second and third year players in the league. And we're going to have one of the youngest rosters in the league. And for Pagano to be returning and for him to spend his last year and their first year together and waste a year of development, that's what bothered me the most about Pagano returning in 2017 was just a wasted year of development. And now we're going to have to wait another year where these guys are basically just, they just wasted an entire summer and now they're wasting their first season in the league where they could have been coached up correctly the first year instead of coached up by Pagano. And that's the one thing back in January that we were saying that was really, really bothering me. And now here it is and we're seeing it before our eyes. 